Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to The Correct Views. This is going to be a really short show, and uh, the main reason for that is that I've been in the process of doing some really big things with the show, trying to find new ways to bring more shows more often, and meanwhile, Google has been out here with uh, updates that have absolutely been making show postings a nightmare. So I'm going to get to these two stories for you, because I haven't posted in a minute. And then I'm going to really focus on um, getting ready for the dunce cap of the month, because I know a lot of you are waiting for that. I will try to get the dunce cap of the month up within a couple of days. It's been really busy, but uh, here's some stories that absolutely needed to be addressed. Uh, this is from Prison Planet. Alan Salazar hacked a Pelosi memo. Obama helped create ISIS. Obama's withdrawal of forces from Iraq exasperated the Iraq, ISIS recruitment. Now, you need to watch in what light you read this in, because there's a lot of people saying that what this article is implying is that Obama needed to stay deeply entrenched in Iraq, and that it was a good idea to be there. That's not the takeaway from the article. Um, the takeaway is that Bush had no business bringing us in there. But when he did, there should have been a better plan to have brought us out under Obama. And he did a very terrible job at how he did it by announcing exactly how it was going to happen. Well, check this out. Uh, whenever anyone says that Trump had some kind of say and some kind of, well, he, he used our tax dollars to help ISIS. Donald Trump was looked at as a liar or unreliable, and his uh, people were blaming it was Bush. It was Bush. Well, let's let's look at this here. Obviously, it was Bush, but let's look at this. Memos obtained by hacker Guccifer 2.0 from former House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi's computer appear to suggest Obama administration policies did indeed lead to the rise of ISIS, a point, uh, as pointed out by the Republican presidential candidate, of course, Donald Trump. In short, our 2003 invasion created the atmosphere for a Jordanian to start the Muslim sectarian war, which ultimately created ISIS. The October 2014 memo from the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee Policy Director Mike Ryan states, the leaked memo reveals uh, that the state of affairs worsened after U.S. troops left Iraq. This is a quote. Helping quickly deteriorate the situation further and give way to ISIS. It goes on that while the events discussed in the memo took place during the George W. Bush administration, clearly, Obama's policies in withdrawing U.S. forces exasperated, exasper, exasperated if I can talk, exacerbated the condition under which ISIS was metastasizing. In other words, yes, as you can see there, George Bush got us into it. But the way that Obama got us out of it made it worse. Unmentioned, it goes on, is that the bulk of the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq took place under the Obama administration and was completed by December of 2011. This is from Breitbart's Eric Klein. Despite this, the memo attempts to blame President Bush's actions for ISIS inception, even though the terror group didn't come to prominence until 2014. In other words, this is not Al-Qaeda. This is Al-Qaeda on steroids, which was helped by really bad military planning from the Obama administration. When the U.S. invaded Iraq in, 20, in, 20, in 2003, we triggered a massive insurgency against our presence. The memo says around this time, a Jordanian ex-convict named Zakhali, who uh, our band Passing Time wrote Praise Allah about, he was scum. Zarqawi traveled to Iraq with one goal, to establish a religious state for the Sunni Muslims. Zakari was killed by American forces, thankfully, in 08, states the memo, and his successors now lead the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. The memo also acknowledges that the ISIS fighters have obtained hundreds of millions of dollars of sophisticated weapons, including vehicles and GPS equipped weapons. Many of these made, are American made, I should say, and were captured from Iraqi troops who we trained and who then showed no bravery whatsoever and just abandoned everything we gave them.
while ISIS is depicted in the memo as the most extreme and powerful Sunni jihadist group worldwide, made up of 20,000 to 31,500 fighters, and as many as 15,000 of them are believed to be foreign recruits, Obama went on to characterize the organization as a JV team. In other words, his advisors were telling him how bad things were, and he was lying to you and I. Republican presidential candidate and hopefully soon to be President Donald Trump took flack for stating earlier this year that President Obama was the founder of ISIS. He said he was the founder of ISIS, absolutely. The way he removed our troops, he's clear about how, Trump said. Well, what do we have here? Trump said he originally lobbied against the invasion of Iraq. So we have here a man, that would be Obama, excuse me, uh, Trump, who was smart enough to know that we should not ever get involved in this. And he knows that if you are involved in a war, you don't lay out exactly how you're going to leave. Because if you do, then you're running a really, really good chance of emboldening the enemy to further diminish uh, the war efforts of the host country. Um, this is, as I should say, the, the country paying for it. That'd be us. Uh, last thing I want to get to, real quick post, because so many of you have come in. Let's look at this. White House Watch. Trump, 40%. Clinton, 39 Johnson, 7 Stein, 3 well, I'm going to be doing a whole show about how Johnson has let down the Libertarian Party in the worst possible way. Uh, Prison Planet's been talking about this. I know, um... Oh, that's annoying. I know, um... A lot of people have been abuzz about this. Paul Joseph Watson was also saying that Johnson's not libertarian when he's supporting uh, NAFTA and the TPP, uh, even if you get rid of the corporate tax. Uh, he He's waffled on vaccinations. He's pro-illegal immigration. Uh, Johnson's a mess. Well, look here. Rasmussen, Trump, 40%. Hillary, 39%. Wonderful news if you care about your country. Uh, Hillary Clinton's post convention lead has disappeared. They are the DNC, that would be, after Philly, putting her behind Donald Trump for the first time nationally since mid July, so he's surging again. The latest weekly Rasmussen reports White House Watch National Telephone and Online Survey shows, thank God, 40% support Trump. 39 for Clinton. Um, after that, um, Gary Johnson, the Libertarian candidate, who's letting us all down at 7%. And uh, Stein, who would bankrupt us, is sitting at 3%. So Clinton's support, it says, has been trending down from a high of 44 that she had in early August after the DNC. That's because she has continually brought out policies that would be a detriment to the country. And that's why you're seeing so many people leaving the Libertarian Party in droves, of which I'm one of, because they have let us down terribly. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Really quick posting today, but do me a favor. Make sure you hit share. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you remember that this is brought to you by Change Transportation. And if you want to save money on uh, your rides with Change Transportation, let them know you heard about it from The Correct Views. You can also put support the show by donating to me at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. You can also donate at Patreon, and that's in our description. Good night, friends. God bless. I'll be back with a, long, a longer show soon.